let, let's start with a brief uh, introduction to our webinar today. Um, I recommend you, uh, I present myself, I, I introduce myself, sorry. Uh, I am Gabriele Vaccaro. Um, I, I, I taken, I've taken uh, a few um, speech uh, uh, with colleagues from Asia, from Cambodia. Um, uh, I think that uh, there will be more, more meeting, more webinar with you. I hope there will be uh, a lot. And uh, it's a pleasure to talk with you. And I invite you to, uh, to ask uh, as many questions you have, uh, writing in the chat. Arnaldo Colonna is the man that is uh, following us. He will gather all the questions. And, and during the lecture, we, I, I hope, I, I would like to answer um, your, uh, your, all of your questions. So don't be shy, don't be shy and, and ask anything you want. We are here to make everything clear um, for our practice. Um, okay, today we are going to talk about um, overdenture, di direct overdenture. Uh, in the last webinar, we talked about, uh, sorry, we talked about uh, uh, it, uh, the, the direct denture over residual roots and this is our starting point where we started and where we are going to start today. And we will arrive uh, till a denture over uh, implants, over denture over implants with a uh, low profile attachment. And this is uh, our aim today. <clears throat> why, talk, why to talk about removable prosthesis today since uh, we have protocols that allow us to make immediate load um, over implant. A fixed immediate load over implant. Why talk uh, about removable prosthesis? Because um, very often in our patient, it's not just uh, uh, the, the wishes of the patient or our uh, uh, capacity to make a fixed or a removable prosthesis, but there are um, many uh, factors that influences uh, a fixed prosthesis versus a removable prosthesis. Uh, sometimes when uh, we have enough bone, we usually uh, think immediately to a fixed prosthesis, but it's not always the right way to think. Because even if we have uh, uh, the right amount uh, of bone, where to put uh, enough number, uh, enough uh, of implant, um, it's not the, uh, the right resource for us. So um, sometimes we have a few, uh, a small amount of bone, residual bone to put implant, and we have to choose a different uh, kind of prosthesis. And sometimes we uh, are able to put a lot of implants and we can make a fixed one. But we have to think about our patient in terms of uh, force, of loading force during mastication. His muscles, his skeletal, um, um, in skeletal um, uh, data, if he is brachycephalic, uh, that means that the transversal diameter is bigger than uh, uh, anteroposterior diameter. This means that he has big master muscles and big temporal muscles. Um, this means that he has a big uh, occlusal load. Um, and this means that maybe a, a fixed prosthesis could be um, a, a less dangerous, a bit sorry, more dangerous for him because the forces transmitted to implant, to the bone implant uh, uh, surface um, could be uh, too much to, uh, to, to, uh, to maintain the, the, the os integration during the years. Instead, adolicocephalic um, um, uh, usually is, um, uh, is associated with uh, small uh, temporal muscles and small masseter muscles. This means that um, the, the ratio between the anteroposterior uh, uh, diameter and the lateral diameter is uh, less than 75%. Exactly. <clears throat> also, don't think about uh, the aesthetic, only the aesthetic, because uh, very often we, uh, with a fixed prosthesis, it's difficult to maintain a good aesthetic, especially in the pink part. So if the patient has a low profile, uh, a low profile um, smile, this means that, um, this means that uh, we can cover with the, lap, with the lip, we can cover this uh, gap or, even, uh, or probably some uh, metal parts uh, visible, some visible metal parts. With the uh, removable prosthesis, it's more easy 
uh, to cover to cover uh, metal parts or to have a, a nice pink uh, aesthetic. Uh, so, uh, very often it's easier with removable with removable prosthesis than with a fixed one. L last time we talked uh, about uh, the using residual roots for um, for uh, direct overdenture, and this is where we started from. Uh, we started from uh, in the 83, 1983 with a sphere uh, glued to a residual root. The same concept is still maintained uh, with implant. And I go faster now, uh, just um, telling you one thing, one important thing, that when um, we still have some residual roots, we have around uh, our uh, root uh, several receptors in the periodontal ligament. And these uh, receptors are um, uh, uh, fundamental to, uh, for the coordination of, um, of the movement of the mandible, of the jaw. Because in, uh, in the periodontal ligament, there are free end fibers, masonry corpuscles, and roofing receptors that gives us the sense of touch, the pressure, and pain. And um, this is not just in theory. I want to make an experiment with you and just try to take a pencil and, and try to bite it with your incisor. Do it right now if you have a pencil uh, beside you. Um, if you. If you try to bite uh, with your incisor uh, this pencil and you want to, uh, uh, to, um, to, to, to put all of your effort to, the, to, to impress uh, the strength as much as, you, as much as force as you can, you will feel um, an, an e biting uh, message coming from a periodontal ligament from the incisor. If you try, if you, you can try as much as you want, but you, you can't, you can't go over a certain point, a certain level of force. Uh, this is because uh, the periodontal ligament uh, around the incisor and around the canine, um, uh, they make a, a weakening message for the muscles, for the masseter muscles and for the temporal muscles. Um, in the other on the other side, if you put your, the same pencil um, between the molar uh, or premolar or first molar, you will feel that um, when you try to bite and to to scrap to crush it with your molar, you will feel um, some kind of extra force given by uh, always by receptors from the periodontal ligament. So um, if you if you try, you will crush the pencil immediately. And remember that when we make overdenture or fixed prosthesis over implant, all of this information are lost, completely lost. So uh, the patient doesn't have, especially in the first period, doesn't have any sense of pressure when he bites or she, when the patient bites, uh, patient bites uh, something. I always tell the story of um, an old man, a, a grandfather, mm, uh, 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 to whom I, I put a fixed uh, uh, full arch, and uh, when he went out of the office, um, he was happy to show his uh, new teeth to his nephew. Um, but the problem was that uh, he tried to, like a joke, to bite the finger of his nephew. He tried to bite it and he was almost uh, hurting him because he didn't feel uh, the, the pressure he was putting. So it's very important uh, when we make a immediate load on over denture, over two implant, over three implant, or a fixed uh, denture, a fixed prosthesis, to advise the patient about it. Don't, don't uh, eat uh, hard food. Don't, um, it's not uh, a question of prudence, but just a question of physiology because he, uh, the patient doesn't have the sense of, of the force that he is putting in, uh, in his uh, function, masticatory function. So last time I ran fast because we uh, saw exactly this case and we had this um, route uh, where the clamp uh, broken, has broken the, the, the crown and we restored, uh, recovered, uh, we restored the crown with um, a post, with a spherical post. We glued it in and we, in, in, while in the lab, they cut away the clasp and put a new crown and uh, make the, uh, the space in empty enough to uh, host the, the, new, uh, the new cap, the new cap. Then we relined the prosthesis over that. 
and we were able to uh, eliminate the, the clasp from the, from, the, uh, from the aesthetic part. This was the starting point, uh, and then uh, the same patient made the same work in the lower jaw, and we converted it, uh, all the clasp disappeared, and we converted all the clasp in uh, residual root attachment. Now today we are going to talk about implants. Uh, the same uh, post uh, has been converted uh, as an equator uh, attachment. So the, um, this is uh, where we started from. So the sphere was the beginning. Then uh, the company in, uh, recently uh, uh, cut uh, the, the, the top or the bottom of the sphere, maintaining just the equator. This means that we have less space inside the um, inside the, the prosthesis, so you have more uh, space inside the, the prosthesis, uh, more prosthetic space. And more, more uh, than this, you have um, uh, lowered the, 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 the cantilever force, so your lever force is lowered. Um, this means that you have less force over your implant. And um, this uh, attachment has a, a hole inside, the equator has a hole inside with a thread inside that doesn't have any communication with the inside of the implant. So when you put this over your implant, you are locking uh, the space, the gap uh, between the implant and the oral environment forever. This is important because um, uh, uh, there are many studies that demonstrated that has demonstrated that fluids remaining here inside the, the implant can, uh, can get out from the gap between the attachment and between the, uh, the, 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 the abutment and the implant can get out and start uh, um, their bone resorption right from here. So this is the bottom of this thread is completely closed. Now, uh, so you have the same diameter for this uh, sphere. And um, this means that you can have different kind of um, uh, shock absorption, different rate of shock absorption. You can have the sphere where you have your, the dedicated cap and that uh, is completely filled. And the same diameter is uh, with the equator, but it's uh, reduced, the, the height is completely, the, is definitely re, uh, reduced. Uh, if you need, you can use the same uh, uh, cap, the plastic cap, the same plastic cap over the um, equator. So you can uh, gain more uh, shock absorption effect. So, the, the dimension of the attachment you are using uh, uh, is very important because, uh, as I said before, you have two effects. You, uh, the lower is the profile, the more space, the, uh, the more prosthetic space you have. This means more, more space for the prosthetic materials and for surrounding soft tissue. Um, and this is the smallest, uh, the lowest profile on the market uh, uh, from the diameter until the height of this attachment. This is a comparison for other competitors, and you can see with uh, all the uh, with the old Carter, with the old uh, housing steel steel housing, um, you have the smallest uh, uh, still the smallest dimension. And moreover, you saw this um, this attachment in gold. This means that it has a, a special treatment, a special surface treatment that um, give the attachment more uh, hardness. Uh, are, um, they have a nitrogen process that allows to increase the titanium hardness till 1,600 beakers. Uh, this means that uh, this attachment is not going to undergo to wearing uh, during the uh, function in, in, uh, in the years. And um, I will show you the comparison between the same attachment nitro-rated and the same attachment without nitro-ration. After a few months, uh, you will see the effect. Compatibility. This means that uh, the equator, you can uh, have an equator dedicated to every kind of uh, implant platform you have. So if you have a patient that, has, uh, that already has one or more implant 
from the past coming from the past and you don't don't have any components of that implant you can have your equator right for that implant for external connection internal connection conmorse connection um, and so uh, and after you put the equator over that implant those were implant if you uh, encounter a, a, a strange implant then after that you can you have a standardized plat prosthetic platform for your technician and this makes everything easier. Um, the height, height of the um, of the uh, soft tissue part, uh, the, the, the the soft tissue cuff is very important because with this system you can uh, have a perfect modulation of the right height you want for your um, for your prosthesis. So um, in every part of the mouth, we have a different thickness, a different thickness of the, of the gum. Uh, for every part of the mouth, we have a dedicated, we can choose the right uh, height we want. Um, so I'm, I make an example. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the middle line, um, when you put two implants in the, in the jaw, uh, sometimes you have a very thick, uh, a very thick um, uh, gingiva, a very thick gum. But when you go uh, uh, in, the, in the posterior part, like premolar or molar region, uh, there you can have a very a thin, a very thin uh, uh, gingiva, a very thin gum. And the same in the upper part, in the maxilla. One important concept is that over that uh, attachment, we put a plastic, uh, a plastic cap. This means that we are not using a rigid material, but a plastic one, a rela an, an elastic one that has a resilience. This means that um, we have many advantages using it because if, you, we, if we use um, a rigid material, this means that uh, the, the, re uh, the retention is given just by the friction between the rigid part that gets in contact with the sphere. So you have just a small part touching the, 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 touching the, 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 the female cap. Um, <clears throat> After a few, uh, after a certain time, after the friction uh, produced the, 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 the consumption of the, of, the, of the part that can be consumed, like the, the metal part. The male part is usually the one that goes under, um, uh, under wearing. Um, otherwise, uh, in the other hand, when we use um, a plastic, uh, an elastic, uh, an retentive fit cap with elastic materials, we have different effects because the uh, contact surface is bigger. Uh, so we have not only the equator, but uh, over, uh, also the undercut under the equator. Um, uh, since this material has, has an elastici elasticity, we um, preserve the metal part from consumption. And um, the, the part that goes under, uh, under uh, wearing is the female cap. That is, that it's easier, a lot easier to remove and change it uh, in, during the year. And this is how it works. You have space enough for giving uh, more resilience and more, uh, and more shock absorption effect. And you have to choose the right, uh, the right, um, the right female cap because you have different, uh, different standard of uh, retention. So uh, it depends a lot on, um, on. You have to evaluate many factors. For example, the age and the ability of the patient, the finger ability uh, of the patient. Because if the patient is very old and he can't, um, he can't. Uh, remove his prosthesis easily, it's better to use a, a soft one uh, or an extra soft one. If the patient is younger and wants a more stable and, and more fir uh, firm steel uh, prosthesis, you can have a strong one. I always recommend to begin with, extra, with the softest, um, uh, with softest female cap and then increase the, the hardness after uh, the patient has uh, confidence with it. For all the components, you, uh, you just need uh, one square screwdriver. Uh, it has a square head uh, that fits all the components um, of the system. 
from the equator attachment till, the, uh, till everything you need to put over that. You can use also a ratchet and it's very recommended because uh, they has to be, um, to be inserted with not more than 25 Newton per centimeter, uh, per square centimeter. This means that um, with your finger, uh, you, usually, um, you usually can gain uh, uh, no more than 15 kilonewtons. You have to follow, uh, don't, don't exceed uh, this uh, torque insertion recommended, don't exceed that, uh, but for always follow the, your implant brand um, um, recommendation for abutment insertion. Every implant brand, brand has recommendation for the abutment insertion and then follow, follow that, uh, that um, recommendation. Why, uh, why, uh, why we choose uh, that kind of abutment instead of another one? Uh, because in the market we have so many abutment uh, that um, it's a very confusing uh, subject for us. But we have to be very clear when, uh, on what is an abutment and what function it has in the mouth uh, over the implant, when we put it over the implant. What is an abutment? It's something that goes over the implant, that um, it's uh, some kind of uh, a piece or that, uh, that makes the implant longer, that allows the implant to cross the, the gum, the gingiva, um, to have a <clears throat> is a something where we can put our teeth easily, something that is connected with the implant, and something that crosses the gingiva, the gum, the soft tissue. And uh, especially now that uh, most of the implants are uh, bone level, are put bo at the bone level, um, the, the abutment is, uh, the, due, uh, the due of the abutment is to establish and maintain during the time the biological width connection. So it's very important to have uh, an abutment that allow us to do it in a perfect way, in the perfect way. So soft tissue management is the, is the main function uh, of the abutment. And I like to, talk, to start this part uh, talking about our father, the fathers of implantology. And Brunemark in 1991 said that osseointegration is achieved if peri-implant mucosa heals rapidly in the margin region, sealing supporting structures. And um, this statement was uh, made when, with the Brunemark protocol, uh, with the two, step, two surgical steps of Brunemark protocol, where um, the first step was to put implant and then cover everything. And uh, uh, Brunemark uh, talked about the sealing uh, uh, in this first step. Today, we can put a, um, a healing screw over an implant and the seal that we can have is no more between two flap uh, of gingiva, but between the gingiva and the titanium of the, um, of the abutment. And I ask you, since we are talking about bone level implants, um, <clears throat> let's uh, take, a, uh, take a look at this. Pretty of what Lind said in the 2008. Peri-implant diseases are infectious in nature. Okay, peri-implant mucositis describes an inflammatory relation that resides in the mucosa, while peri-implantitis also affects the supporting bone. So this means that mucositis is the first step of the peri-implantitis. Let's think about it. Um, we are talking about um, bone level implants. Bone level implants means that there, there are no implant parts crossing the, uh, the, the, the mucosa. So what is crossing the mucosa? The abutment. So the mucositis is established uh, in the first step, not around the implant, but around our uh, abutment. And this is a very important step. So this is our uh, bone level implant, and this is the, our abutment. And we can see the difference between the, um, <clears throat> between the natural tooth and the implant because natural tooth as uh, the, the, the connective tissue around natural tooth has nutrition from, uh, from vessels coming from the periodontal ligament, from the gingiva and from the bone, crystal bone. In the implant, we don't have any, uh, any trophic uh, function from the periodontal ligament because uh, it, there is no periodontal ligament, of course. The only nutrition uh, that the, this connective tissue around the abutment, not the implant, around the abutment, 
is coming from the gingiva and from the crystal ball. Um, moreover, we don't have any, um, <clears throat> any perpendicular uh, collagen fibers attaching to the root, to the cement of the root. We have just circular, uh, circular um, uh, periodontal ligament, so, sorry, circular um, um, uh, collagen fibers that goes around the abutment, like exactly like a circle, like um, a round circle around the, uh, the abutment. The only thing that can create a seal, a biological seal with a, a deep tissue, with a, a deeper tissues, is the um, epithelium. Uh, epithelial cells uh, can create a bi biological uh, attachment here uh, with uh, hemidesmosomes, uh, with hemidesmosomes here. Um, and it's the only seal that we can have uh, uh, from butters, uh, uh, preventing butters coming down deep in, the, in this uh, space. Uh, try to imagine what we uh, can have if we unscrew this uh, many times, multiple times. So now let's introduce this um, one abutment at one time uh, concept. This means that in the same moment when we put the implant, we put the abutment. So um, we, they, in this study, they demonstrated that a subsequent reconnection of the abutment um, compromised the mucosal, uh, the barrier, mucosal barrier. And <clears throat> all the soft tissue um, migrated apically. Um, this means that just the abutment manipulation, just that without any plaque, uh, any, without any plaque accumulation, uh, brought us to soft tissue down growth. This means a pocket. Around our abutment, we have, uh, we have had a new pocket. And then the next step was the bone loss. So the more, uh, the, the more stable is the abutment that we put over the implant, uh, the more stable are the soft tissue around that. And on the same way, on the other way, sorry, uh, they demonstrated here in this study that um, not uh, fixing the abutment and without touching uh, anymore the abutment after the positionment, um, <clears throat> the bone healing around subcrestal tapered implants was uh, maintained uh, during the year, um, they had statistically significant reduction of the horizontal bone remodeling. We, if we have certain kind of implants, we can add this kind of concept, the switch plat switch, uh, sorry, platform switch concept. This means that we have, uh, for instance, an implant for diameters, uh, uh, four millimeters of diameters, and we put a smaller abutment over that. Um, this means that we have more space for the, for the biological width to establish and more space for the bone, for the connective tissue to go over that. If we match this with the, um, with the conomorph connection, we can have a perfect seal of the, of the fluids, for the fluids uh, without uh, allowing them to come into the, the bone, into the, sorry, into the implant space. And so we can allow the bone to grow over, over, the, uh, over the bone, over the, the level of the implant. So the function of the, of the abutment is to create and maintain a biological seal, as we have seen till now. It gives shape and toughness to the soft tissue, prevent so the soft tissue downgrowth, downgrowth because if we maintain it uh, for the, with the one abutment, one time concept, uh, the, the downgrowth of the soft tissue is prevented and we prevent the biological weed contamination. What do I mean with this? That um, uh, this is a traditional, uh, a traditional uh, prosthetic protocol where we put the implant and then over the implant, we put a traditional healing screw. This means that now, uh, um, now I have to unscrew this one and take the impression, then screw again this one, and then unscrew again in the next appointment with the patient to uh, check, the, uh, check the framework or other check with the technician, then screw again, and um, I'm, I'm committing a multiple manipulation of the abutment, of the healing screw. 
and remember, try to compare this picture with the, with the scheme that we uh, have seen before. We see the implant, this is the bone level, here we have bone. The healing is wonderful around here, but I have unscrewed and I ask you what happened to the epithelial hemidesmosomal um, seal ligament that we had between epithelial cells and titanium. I have already broken it and I'm putting something given by the technician that is uh, it can have dust, powder, aluminum coating, uh, it, it's difficult to remove it. So I'm working inside the biological weed with something that is contaminated. And after uh, a few checks, the, the soft tissue that I had perfect in the first step, in the first healing step, is completely destroyed. And the, <clears throat> and the epithelial attachment is going to, uh, to, uh, to, to set up always uh, down and down and down. So, do we have uh, a specific device for the soft tissue management? Yes, of course, we have, and we know exactly how to use it. We have the healing screw. Um, and as a clinician, we know perfectly which height we want for that implant, which diameter and which profile we want for that implant. And in the same way as we choose the, uh, the healing screw, we <clears throat> We, uh, the same care we need to take for, uh, for the choose of the abutment. And we, if we use the abutment, uh, the right abutment, you can use it exactly as a healing screw. Moreover, I think that the healing screw should be used as a one piece, one, um, as a, sorry, a one use, a single use piece, because after the sterilization, after the, the screw stays in the mouth for uh, some months, it, can, it gets away with this uh, around. So we have to remove this with ultrasound, of course, but um, <clears throat> sterilization and, uh, and uh, physical topography uh, are changed when we uh, clean it and sterilize it because uh, the treated, the milled titanium coming from the, from the uh, from the, from the factory is the perfect surface where the blood clot wet um, and establish the first, uh, uh, the first uh, healing point for the, for the scar. And, the, and, uh, and over that kind of titanium, uh, it can be established the, the biological wheat and the uh, epithelial seal. If we change it, uh, it's more difficult to, to attach to the titanium, for the epithelial cell to attach to the titanium. More than this, uh, after a different cycle of sterilization, the thread of the screw can be altered. Um, and we put inside a new, um, and we put inside a new implant uh, uh, a thread that is uh, altered. So uh, other, moreover, uh, debris may clog screwdriver insertion sites. So the, the screwdriver can have some difficulties to get inside the, the, the hexagon uh, engagement. And if you have a conomorse connection, mechanical and cleaning uh, can damage implant abutment connection. So the, the best would be to have an, uh, uh, a healing screw that is fixed forever and the prosthetic part uh, is developed over the, uh, over, the, um, over the abutment without getting inside the, without getting inside uh, the implant again. So what we see until now is the exact what uh, the function of the abutment in establishing the biological width connection. So implant screw connection is uh, the capability of the implant to match with different kind of implant. Now uh, let's get into the focus of the lecture today. That is to um, use the, this attachment for um, this attachment for the, the direct overdenture. Um, why uh, it's more, so important to have this kind of attachment, this nitrated, um, low profile, and with a thread inside. Because this kind of abutment works exactly as a multi-unit abutment with one piece. We, are com we have converted uh, everything in one piece. Um, we have a ball attachment and we have a healing abutment, all in one piece. To make a direct overdenture, we just need to have this kind of components, the female cap and the housing, metal housing for the female cap. 
single overdenture, the equator profile gives up. So when, um, when we have uh, low divergences, it's easy to, to put um, uh, just the uh, over that, um, uh, over this, um, over the equator, just the simple uh, female cap with the housing steel, because the tolerance that it has inside uh, allows to overgo this uh, undercut. Uh, so if we have implant divergences still <clears throat> 15 degrees per implant, this means 30 degrees in total, we can use just the female cap. It's the simple, the easiest, uh, the first step, uh, the easiest one. So in this mandible, we had a problem because the patient had um, sensitivity uh, because the, his prosthesis was uh, compressing the uh, alveolar nerve. And uh, so we put two implants, uh, we put two implants, uh, the vertical dimension was completely collapsed uh, and they had uh, KDD singularis. Uh, the patient had KDD singularis over it. So we need to increase uh, the vertical dimension, the vertical height. After we put two implants, we uh, closed everything. We made a traditional surgery, a two-step surgery. So we closed, sutured everything and we waited for the healing. After that, we put our, uh, our uh, abutment, uh, choosing the right height to um, make the uh, platform uh, at the right level of the gingiva, not too high, not too low below. And now I want to speak uh, with you about the, um, what happens if we don't use nitro-rated attachment. Uh, because in the market, we have a lot of uh, uh, titanium, uh, titanium attachment, but after a few months, the, uh, the insertion and uh, disinsertion of the prosthesis over this and the masticatory function and the small micro movements that the prosthesis uh, makes in the mouth um, can bring us to this effect. So the, the, we are have losing, we are losing, we are completely losing the retention because this is no more a sphere, but it's, it's a cylinder. And I, I wanted to check this. And, uh, and, and after that, I changed um, the titanium uh, attachment with the nitrated one. And after two years, this is the result. It's perfectly like uh, a new one. And this is the comparison between a brand new and the old one. So, um, after the healing, this is, these are the first steps. Since I have a screw uh, thread inside the attachment, I can take a precision impression. And uh, with others, with other ball attachment, it's impossible. You need to use um, a snap-on uh, transfer. In, in this, this is a screw, a passing through screw, and, <clears throat> and this fits exactly inside the thread. Sorry, I want to, uh, this fits exactly inside the thread here. Okay, right here. And I can make an, a precision impression. Over this impression, the technician gives me a, a wax wall with, the, with two female cap inserted uh, over, that, uh, over that attachment. This means that I have a more stable, sorry, a stable one, a stable wax wall with which I can just clip on, <clears throat> I just have to clip on uh, the two uh, equator attachment. And, uh, and I have a stable wax wall. With other systems, uh, I ask you, how do you do without this uh, two female cap? How do you do? Do you use uh, uh, the adhesive paste? Do you ask your assistant to uh, take the, the, the wax wall uh, in place while you are checking the occlusion? So we uh, work uh, over the wax until we, uh, we reach the right uh, uh, vertical height. Since I have uh, something clipped on the implant, I can move his mandible with my, with my hands and I can drive the mandible where I want using the Dawson technique, sorry, the Dawson technique, the Lucia technique. On the same plaque, 
Uh, on the same plaque, the technician with the, uh, always with the two female cap, the technician um, puts all the teeth. And so I can check uh, the, f the function of this. I devo dire that, ah, okay. destra e sinistra. This is in Italian, of course. And ah, in sono Italian... un disastro catastrofico. Altrettanto catastrofico è la politica di Trump. Okay. Uh, so this is, um, in Italian, you have in your language, of course, you have some uh, vowels or some letters that are very difficult to pronounce with new denture. And I have already put the denture, the, sorry, the, the teeth, the, the resin teeth mounted on the wax. I have already put it in, in the mouth and I checked immediately. I could check immediately the, the, the speaking ability of the, of the patient. Uh, in Italian, there are a few um, letters like S, T and the R that are very difficult to pronounce uh, with, uh, with new prosthesis, uh, with new teeth. Since I have clipped everything uh, in the mouth, it's easier to, to check the, this. Okay, once again, listen. 61, 62, 63, 64. Okay, I'm asking the patient to count from 60 to 70 uh, to 79 because S and T are very difficult to pronounce. 65, 66. Okay. So, uh, after that, since everything is precisely uh, checked, has been precisely checked, the technician can finish the work. So, the housing, uh, the steel housing, and the female cap inside. And then, uh, everything completely restored. The calitis angularis is uh, disappearing, is healing, and, and, <clears throat> and this is the smile of the patient. It was important to check the, 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 the the speaking capability of the patient because this patient, I want to show you this picture, because this patient uh, wasn't able to touch uh, the, the, the screen of, the, of, the, uh, of his uh, mobile, but he uh, used the voice command uh, to talk, uh, to, give, to make call or to make other things with his mobile. So he was really afraid that um, he wasn't more able uh, to, to use his mobile with his voice uh, and that the mobile couldn't recognize his voice, his pronunciation. And after I delivered um, his uh, new denture, the first thing he did was this, to take his phone and talk with the phone uh, to make a call to his son. When we have divergences more than 50 degrees, we need, a, uh, we need a, a, an extra grade um, retentive cap, but this is another argument. We will check it in another, um, in another, uh, in another presentation. Okay, this is the smart box. Uh, the smart box uh, works exactly like this. It has a uh, two level of, of uh, uh, steel housing, has a fixed one, and inside there is a second one that has a, um, um, a basculation point here that uh, gives more, more movement inside the, the female cap and um, allow the, the prosthesis to overcome divergences still 50 degrees. When, we did, when the divergence is more than uh, 50 degrees and we have a very difficult case, we can uh, overcome this by using a customized, uh, customized uh, attachment. <clears throat> uh, we need the, the, the plastic, the plastic uh, abutment and we can, uh, we can put the, the equator exactly where we want. So let's, uh, and in this case it's more uh, important, more important than in others, to check the prosthetic space you have. So first of all, make a wax up and a mask, a silicone mask after the wax up, a silicone mask that uh, gives, give us, the technician especially, the space inside we uh, want to take uh, our prosthesis. And when we put a uh, abutment or attachment over implant, it's very important to have them at the same level if we can. So, because uh, we have to keep in mind also that the, the pattern of insertion of the, of the denture of the patient is not the same that we have in the, in the lab. 
because the patient always put it in the mouth, close the mouth, and this is his pattern of insertion. So our referent point, reference point is the occlusal plane, this one. And the, <clears throat> and the attachment must be uh, perpendicular to the occlusal plane. So in this case, the patient had six implants, sorry, as six implants that he didn't use for a long time. He didn't load for many, for different reasons. After that, he came at our studio, our office, and we made uh, a new prosthesis. So first of all, the wax up, as we said in the beginning. The wax up with teeth um, is a guide where we can put, uh, where we have to put uh, a silicone mask. The axis of the implant is extremely tilted. So it's, um, it's a vestibular respect of the teeth. So let's take the reference point that is the occlusal plane. And keep in mind that our attachment must go inside the, must go perpendicular, sorry, to the occlusal plane. Because if we maintain the attachment with this uh, angulation, they will get worn out very easily in the vestibular part immediately. So the silicone mask give us the space where we have to fit everything inside. As you can see here, it's uh, too much. So let's cut everything until it fits inside the silicone mask. This component is the castable one. <clears throat> this screw is the laboratory screw, of course. Uh, cl uh, clinically, in the mouth, we, will we are going to use a smaller one. And this is the um, available space that we have for the uh, abutment, for the screw for the uh, female cap and for the housing, and that's enough. And more important, um, more important, we, had, uh, we uh, were able to put the, um, the new attachment perfectly perpendicular to the occlusal plane, because we put this with, the, uh, parallel, uh, with exactly the same parallelometer we used, um, we used uh, to, to check the occlusal plane. After that, we cast all the custom uh, components. Perfect, and we have everything inside our prosthetic space. We choose to leave this uh, equator because the divergences was less than uh, 30 degrees between each other, so it was enough uh, for, the, uh, for the tolerance of the female cap. After that, as you can see, we just um, put, uh, we made all, the, all of the uh, check that we made with the, uh, as we saw in the first case, with the wax wall, with the teeth over that. And this is the prosthesis delivered. Perfect. So I, I'm arrived in time, I hope. And with this, I, I finished my presentation. I thank everyone. I thank everyone for listening to, to me.